Welcome, you're tuned in to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 507. Today, I'm answering a question about fights to the death. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, show host, Whistlekick founder, and if you're unfamiliar with Whistlekick, well, everything we do here is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you're interested in what that means, what we're doing, go to whistlekick.com. That's where you'll find everything we're involved in, and one of the things we're involved in is selling some stuff. We have a store, and if you check out the store, make sure you use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. That could be on some gear or a shirt or maybe one of our programs, like our new speed program. Lots of stuff over there. Go check it out. If you're interested in this show, everything we have here is at a different website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. The show comes out twice a week, and you'll see new episodes all over the place in your podcast feed, YouTube, you name it. The goal of the show is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists throughout the world. And if you want to help the show, if you want to help the work that we're doing, you can make a purchase, or you could also do one of many other things. You could share an episode with somebody, maybe follow us on social media, tell a friend about what we're doing, pick up a book or a program, leave a review, maybe support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can do as little as $2 a month, but if you contribute as little as five, we're going to give you more content. There's original content that we do only for our Patreon supporters as a thank you for parting with your hard-earned dollars. We appreciate it. This show, all the things we're doing, they're expensive. And we appreciate your help in keeping the lights on. Today's subject comes from a question, a question that was first posed on First Cup. If you're unfamiliar with First Cup, it's the morning show that I do live on YouTube five days a week. And if you're interested in check it out, 6.30 a.m. Eastern. And it's just, it's fun. It's me in a bathrobe with a cup of coffee responding to things that people write in. It's not quite an ask me anything, but it's, it's pretty darn close. And so this question, I tackled it and it sat with me. And I thought, you know, I need to go deeper on this. And we're better to go deeper on a subject than martial arts radio. And the question that was posed was from Gabe. Do you think this world will ever see gladiator-type games, which include death? Now, of course, if you want to check out the episode of First Cup where we talk about this, it's the May 21st episode. I don't usually talk about when I record things, but yeah, that's when I recorded this. It's May 21st, 2020. And you go check that out if you want to. That was an off-the-cuff response. And while I haven't gone back and taken notes on it, I think I'm following a pretty similar flow here. Now, I did do a bunch of research. I I looked up statistics, and there were a number of kind of avenues that I chased down because the short answer is yes, I think we will. Now, I'm not 100% sure that we're going to see in our lifetimes. Of course, how old you are dramatically impacts your likelihood, but I think the chance of seeing this only increases over time. We've been fascinated with this idea of violent combat that goes all the way to death for a long time. The most popular movie that first featured this, at least that I'm familiar with, is The Running Man. And if you've seen that movie, you know it's about convicts fighting to the death. There's always going to be a portion of our population that enjoys watching violence. A popular UFC pay-per-view gets more than a million buys, meaning more than one million people are paying for it. How many people are also watching with that person who buys it. Think about a bar where there might be dozens of people. So out of that million, I think we can say 10, 50, 100 million people are watching a popular UFC pay-per-view. Last year, American football had 16.5 million people watching. Now, of course, neither of those are to the death. But I think what they illustrate is that there's a large portion of our population that appreciates the more physical contact that occurs in mixed martial arts and in football. If you talk to people about what they like about football, there are a lot of things that they'll answer with, but one of them will be the dramatic hits. Anyone who's played football talks about putting an intense hit on somebody else. Well, of course, depending on their position on the field, I don't think we can deny that this is something that is part of our culture, for some of us at least. 
the best-selling video game of all time, it's Grand Theft Auto V. If you've ever played that, if you know that series of video games, it's violent. In case you're interested, the first best-selling video game of all time is Minecraft. And to my mind, that's likely because of the, uh, the, the age range, the appeal. Grand Theft Auto V isn't something that parents are going to let their children play, at least not knowingly. Now, in order for my prediction to come true, we have to consider how violence has changed over time. And it has. In fact, it's increased pretty dramatically. Violence in PG-13 movies has tripled since 1950. And we're seeing the notion of that violence played out at all levels, not just PG-13 movies. Consider the violence in rated R movies, even G and PG movies. There's more violence than there ever was. The Hunger Games spent three movies exploring the idea of fighting to the death. And yeah, they brought in some honor and there's some benefit to their area, their district, if we say it in the parlance of these movies. And of course, there are plenty of other films that explore this idea. Running Man and Hunger Games are the most notable, but there are many, many others, and some of them are fairly recent. How does this all add up? Well, as a population, we will pay to watch violence. That is undeniable. As the NFL creates, updates rules to make it for a safer environment for their players, there are people that complain about the level of contact and penalties and all that. The UFC has gone through the same thing. If you take a look at early days of the UFC, there were far fewer rules. And as they institute rules, people complain. Now, that doesn't mean that rules are bad. I'm certainly not saying that at all. I'm saying that there will always be a portion of people who resist the removal of violence from these things that they enjoy watching because they enjoy them for the violence. And if you know where to look, you can still find, even today, rule-centric fight promotions that have even fewer rules, that are much more violent than the UFC. And I'm not talking about others that maybe you've heard of kind of spoken in the same sentences. And yes, some of these fight promotions are even legitimate. The Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, it's based in Philadelphia, right here in the U.S. It is still active. And from everything I can tell, it continues to grow. It is exactly what it sounds like. I'm not saying it is good or bad, right or wrong. I'm simply observing. It's often said that the world moves in cycles. Well, of course, gladiators of the past, many of them fought to the death. No, not always. But from everything we know today, it was a huge draw. And if we look at the momentum of violence in modern society, just as we become more civilized, there is a counter effort, we'll say, to showcase an ever increasing standard of violence. As we become more civilized, there's a portion of the population that demands more violence. Is it to remain in balance? I don't know, but it seems that way. It's odd to me, but the data backs it up. If I do a quick search on YouTube for skateboarding, the third suggested autocomplete is fails. If you know what skateboarding fails look like, it's people getting hurt. They're violent. If I do the same thing for MMA, if I type MMA into YouTube, the third result is knockouts, arguably the most violent part of full contact fighting. We know people want this stuff, and if they're willing to pay for it, it's going to happen. This is where we turn hypothetical. It doesn't take somebody who's terribly creative to imagine that it would be incredibly lucrative to broadcast a, let's say, a real, quote-unquote, real fight over the internet. Now, if amateur fighters, amateur mixed martial artists, are willing to risk their lives, granted, not a terribly great chance of death or even serious injury, but still a chance, if they're willing to do that for no money, for the glory, maybe the, the hope of long-term money. How many average people would step into a ring with no rules for a million-dollar purse? Imagine that there's a million dollars on the line and $750,000 goes to the winner, $250,000 goes to the loser. And what if in the rules it says, you know what? If you pass away, that money goes to your family. 
there are plenty of places in the world where $250,000 is more money than people will see in their lifetime. Would everyone do this? No, but it doesn't take everyone. It takes two people. While I imagine the rules of this sort of fight event wouldn't specifically state that it's to the death, we don't have to stretch too far to imagine that that fight occurs without a referee, that the end of the fight is when one person can't continue. Well, let's say that the winner is loaded up on adrenaline, their judgment's clouded, and maybe they're a little bit sadistic, and they go too far. And the person who loses the fight loses their life. I think we can imagine that happening. What happens then to the attention to this fight that probably was broadcast live over the internet, probably some low-budget pay-per-view, and then all of a sudden people start talking about it? What happens when they hold the next one? It goes viral. People pay more and more attention to it. Now, in my imagination, the, the only reason this has not happened is that the people who have the means don't have the willingness. The people with the money, the connections, haven't been inclined to do this. But if we look far enough into the future, at some point, eventually, this is going to change. Someone will do this. And when that happens, I'll refuse to watch. A little bit different sort of episode today, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made you think, because... That's one of my favorite things about what we do over here. If you want to see the show notes for this or any other episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You will find every single episode we've ever done. Every episode has a page all to itself with links, photos, a transcript, sometimes even more. And if you're willing to support us in the work that we do, you've got some options. Visit the store at whistlekick.com and use the code PODCAST15 to get 15% off. You can also share an episode, leave a review, tell a friend, or contribute to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. And I hope that if you see somebody out in the world wearing something with Whistlekick on it, you'll introduce yourself. I'd love to hear your guest suggestions, your topic suggestions, so you can email me, jeremy at Whistlekick.com, and our social media is at Whistlekick. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 